Hello everyone. In the previous video we just used material to create the lightning effect. And in this video, we will use static mesh to create it. Compared to use material, using static mesh is easier to change the style and twist of the lightning. And its effect will also be better. So now let's do it. To use mesh to create a lightning effect, we need a static mesh and a simple material. Lit may not be very clear, but it is a mesh similar to a ring and the standard UV used in particle effects, which will make it better to create the lightning material. Next it's material. Here we use generate band as the shape of the lightning. Of course, we can also use any texture, such as some real lightning texture, which will make the effect better. Set its width and some basic settings. It defaults to the band in the U direction, and we need the band in the V direction, so swizzle its UV, Then there is a dynamic material parameter, which are the texture dynamic offsets added when we use the texture. Finally connect it to the HDR to make emissive color. Then take a look at its opacity. We use the gradient mask made by UV. Use TextScored and dynamic material parameter here to control the translation of the lightning. For example, if we want the lightning to pass from top to bottom, we can set the wipe from 1 to negative 1. OK, keep it to default, then connect it to the alpha channel in the particle color to make the opacity. Finally, there is the world position offset. We use a normal texture to control the direction of the world position offset. Of course, this texture is also set according to our needs. We can use different textures to make the world position offset stronger or more frequent. Set the random offset and panner according to the texture. Then multiply the edge mask. Finally we need a transform vector. Convert it from local space to world space so that when we rotate these meshes, its world position offset will be correctly. Now multiply it by WPO in dynamic material parameter. And add spline thicken increases the width of the mesh. We can just connect the two together. This material function is often used when making some strips. OK, we can create Niagara now. First, rename it and add a mesh renderer. Find the static mesh spline and set the life cycle to self. Then add a spawn rate. Set it to 10. OK, now we can see these meshes. Next, we need to set the lifetime in the particle spawn. Since it simulates lightning, its lifetime should be slightly shorter, 0.2 to 0.3. Use a random color and hue shift of 0 to 1. We can also use a user parameter as the base color, such as blue. Then add an initial mesh orientation. Set the z-axis to 0 to 1. The mesh has a random initial rotation on the z-axis. Oh, and we also need to set the scale mesh. Select random non-uniform. Set the x-axis to 0.01, the y-axis to 1.5, and the z-axis to 0.5, the maximum x-axis to 0.02, which controls the strength of the mesh bending. Keep the y and z-axis consistent. OK, then add a dynamic material parameter. This is the most important part. Set the world position offset to 200. Yes, we can see the twist effect similar to lightning. Then set the spline thicken to 100. When we use the texture, we can set the random offset to 0 to 1. Finally, the wipe from 1 to negative 1. And we can add scale color. Set the color and alpha of the mesh as well. OK, that's it. Now, let's go back to the level and see if it works. By the way, if we remove the transform vector, we can see what happens. Oh, we also need to set it to local space so that it can rotate. Let's take a look at what happens if we don't use the transform vector. Okay, so now we can see that when it's not rotated, it looks normal. 
but once we rotate Niagara, its world position offset will be wrong. This is because the normal texture applied to the world position offset in the material does not rotate with the mesh. So we need to convert its vector from local space to world space to get the correct world position offset. Next, add the spline beam, set the world position offset a little smaller, and set its x-axis a little smaller. Rotate Niagara, so that we can get the same lightning effect as in our preview. Of course, we can also make some modifications to the material. For example, we use a texture to replace the generate band and connect it. Using a texture will make the lightning effect better. If we use a more realistic lightning texture, the effect will be even better. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.